So here's the Shaw mod. She's uh, all torn apart. So I'm going through everything. I said it in my last video how I wanted to tear everything down. And everything's torn down now. Um, I can get to all this stuff to nut and bolt everything. So this stuff doesn't need to be torn down. And the seat belts and stuff I can get to, but the seat's out of it. Obviously, I wasn't going to use that one. Um, but yeah, everything's off of it, as you can see. All the rear stuff, that's off. Brake lines are still on. I can go and tighten the fittings up where they are. But the body's off. Um, cool thing is I can take the body, like the doors and quarters off this, and run that, and run it on that. So I may do that. May not, I don't know, people are telling me not to because it's a new car, so you should go out there with all new stuff, but I like the way this body looked, so I kinda wanna keep that one. Plus it should go up on the wall anyways with that one. But here's all the stuff, fuel cell, I pulled that out. Um, like some of these bolts are kind of a pain to get to to tighten up. So I just wanna go over that. I don't know what brand fuel cell this is. Uh, I haven't looked into that yet. But here's all the bird cages, rotors, everything. Uh, the pinion mounts off the rear end. Everything's off the tubes. Um, I pulled the back cover off. All those gears look fine. I forget what gear ratio is in it. But obviously I have to get different gear ratios because with the Mopar, I'm not gonna be turning it as much as the Chevy guys. Um, so there's not really a need to do that. But pretty much all this stuff is CPT, like my J-Bar CPT. Bird cages are CPT. Um, the J bar mount itself is wares, and that's like pretty common. That's what a lot of people run. Um, so that's wares, but the J bar itself is CPT. Um, those are Hyperco springs. The front springs are wrong. They're like an 800 and 700. So those are wrong. Rear links, those are outpace. Um, I got to get the spacers for them and see if Shaw recommends the offset spacers like that or not. It's got a sweet eight to one box, which is new, and I don't want an eight to one. So if someone wants to trade me a six to one for the eight to one, I'll do that. It's a 13 16 shaft, uh, 210. So there's that. This is a winner's rear end. Uh, they welded the brake stay on, so I had to cut that and kind of clean it up a little bit. You can see that over here. Not sure if that's common to weld them on because it looks like there's a a cut cut off wheel mark before like where someone might have cut it off uh they just bolt on so maybe it moves around I'm not exactly sure uh they got the wheel bearings all packed with grease you can see that some of that stuff was loose so i'm glad i took this apart some people probably think i'm crazy for taking everything apart but it's definitely the smarter thing to do because you never know what people then tighten up that's saying i'm perfect and i'll tighten everything up right but you know a little bit better chance that I pay attention since I got a winner, but where's chain mount, chain limiter, whatever you want to call it, uh, CPT spring cups, that's a coilover mount for the shock, so the shocks are all off it and you send that out. One's a Fox, so I'm probably going to get rid of that one and then just buy a new Integra so I have matching ones because it bugs me if they don't match. Um, all Willwood calipers, uh, I forget the brand of the brake pads, but it's got good brake pads on it. Um, these are Willwood rotors and hubs. Um, same thing with the fronts. I uh, got gun drilled axles. Um, trying to think what else we got. Obviously, shawl mounts on it. And then got lowers here. Uh, they got how ball joints in them. So I took all those ball joints out and measured them to make sure they're the correct ones because I got the part numbers that Shaw recommends. So I had to measure them all. They don't have like any, well, I didn't think they had like a part number on them, but on the very top, you can see they have like letters on them and that annotates the length of them. So you can just look at the top of them and know, which I didn't figure that out till I did a whole bunch of measuring and looking stuff up. But these are the premium lowers. They got Weir's Delrin mounts or lower bushings, whatever you want to call them the house screw-ins uh they're outpace uppers and i don't want to run those either um because shaw recommends to run this rear mount so those ones are too short and i have to get ones that are centered i believe so i gotta do that still 
and then these are Speedway three-piece spindles. They're the short arm ones. So I think it's five inches from here to here, and then the normal ones are seven. So that's that. Those are Willwood calipers, Willwood rotors again, and hubs. Um, it did have polished bearings, so that's pretty nice. And then it has the bearing spacers. And then I got this special grease that's really expensive for them. So I got to repack those. Now I got to get new seals. I did bust. This one's all right, but the other one I busted pulling it out. Um, I got a CPT coil over eliminator over there. But yeah, just want to show that everything's torn apart. And uh, I'm going to start putting it back together. I got to cut the, the decking out. So I can put the fuel cell back in. And yeah, that's where we're at. So if anyone wants to trade, eight to one for a six to one. That one's brand new. I'll take a used one. Oh, and then I forgot all that stuff back there, but there's the shocks. And then that's a solid pull bar. I'm gonna get rid of that also. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. Okay, so we got one control arm on for our lower. See everything moves super smooth. The ball joint, very smooth. And then I'm gonna go over this one to show you guys how to do it by the book, um, exactly what they recommend. Got directions, you know, a lot of people don't follow these, but they take the time for a reason to make these. And uh, I'm usually not one to follow them either, but I got all winter to do everything right, so might as well do everything right. So first thing first, this is brake cleaned out. This ball joint studs break cleaned out. So we drop it in there. Drop it in, I set it in. But that's in and they're clean. There's no grease on it. They don't want you to have grease on it when you put it in. They said grease in the threads is fine. So grab your cap. That's cleaned out. A little bit of grease left in the threads. Then you just tighten this down. So luckily our flat ended up right where the howl letter is, and then that's 90 degrees from that. So once it touches off, then you do an eighth of a turn. So we'll put our flat right in between there and there. That's an eighth of a turn, 45 degrees. And then once that's complete, then you tighten up your set screws around both sides and do, don't tighten up one side, tighten them up evenly on both sides, they said, um, and put a dab of blue Loctite if you have a steel cap. Okay, so next you grease it. This is Schaefer's 274. This is what they recommend. It's a molly grease. And then you just pump it and rotate the ball around. So I'll need both hands. But once it starts coming out the top side, then you're done. You don't need to do any more. So it'll get hard once you start pumping it, and that's why you gotta rotate it. It just shows how well that these are machined, the seal that they'll get. So I think that's pretty cool how tight the tolerances are that you can't even pump grease into them unless you move them around. So there's that. Um, see the grease on the outside of the ball. And now these are Ware's lower Delrin bushings. And I contacted them and they said any old wheel bearing grease will work. So that's what I'm gonna be using for that. So the fatter ones go in the rear, skinnier ones in the front. And then just apply some grease to the outside, inside on here because it also pivots off of here. Um, so just grease them all up and you can grease your sleeves also. The inside just so the bolt comes out a little bit easier just so it doesn't corrode in there and lock the bolt in there. That's what I did on the last one. But yeah, just a simple wheel bearing grease. Is it anything special? All right, so both lowers are on now. I got my spring jacks in there. So these have a little Torrington bearing into these. These are CPT manufacturing. You can see it in there. So I took that, the little washers on both sides, grease those up, then grease the bearing up and you can see. Didn't spin like that before. And that's super easy moving this all around. And then for the threads of this, they're starting to get some surface rust in there. So I took some ARP lube. Uh, I just bought this bottle and then you always get the packets whenever you're putting stuff together. So I got tons of the packets. So I could kind of waste it on stuff like this. And I put it all in the threads in this because that's like that's to keep things lubed while there's force on it so you get like an accurate torque number and this obviously has a bunch of force on it and it's still going to allow it to be smooth so i figured that'd be the perfect application for that as long as it doesn't 
get coated with dirt, you know, and ruin it. But as far as being able to move, once you get it in the right area, you know, you're going to move it up and down a little bit. So hopefully that area stays somewhat clean enough for that to work properly in it. And then I just use that wheel bearing grease for that little Torrington bearing on both sides. And then I adjusted this. So this just has a little detent in it that you push down and all this slides off. And I tighten that up so it doesn't have a bunch of slop because if there's a bunch of slop and somehow that hits it, then, you know, all that stuff could slide off. I mean, that's worst case scenario. A lot of things have to line for that to happen, but makes me feel better doing it that way. So let me be. And that spins good. We'll go over to this other side. Check it out, woo -hoo. But same thing on this side, ARP lube on there. And this side, uh, they had two of the bolts that are long enough. They're four inches under the head length and then just nylon lock nuts, um, ball joint, they said free. And then you can see, well, you can't really see, but it has like the same resistance all the way through. There's no hard spots or binds anywhere. And it's on like that on both sides. And I actually called Shaw today to order some uppers because I want their uppers instead of the outpace ones. And uh, he was telling me that this is actually the right setup. Because in the notes it says to run the rear hole. And he's saying this is actually right for a track like Ablin, my local track. So that's pretty cool. That's already set up like that. But those are on the way. And I'm going to take the ball joints out of those out pace ones and put them in my shaw ones and or i might just compare the two and keep the shaws as spares because they might be fine but yeah these were all gummed up before i took them apart cleaned them put some grease in that ball socket so everything's moving a lot freer freer not freer um and also the bolts that were on here before the threads didn't go into the nylon so I don't know if you know this or not, but for a nylon lock nut to work, the threads have to be in the nylon. So now the nylon lock nuts work and everything's just much freer and gives me something to do. So, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm going to put the knuckles on it. I don't really want the weight just like hanging on the ball joint. Not that it's going to hurt anything because, you know, it's meant to have an engine and all that stuff, all that weight on it. But it's a, kind of a different load way it sits in the socket so i don't really want to do that to him uh, that's just my thought process you think i'm an idiot that's fine you wouldn't be the first but and then i got some more bolts just to have spares of stuff right, so my new wheel seals they should be here tomorrow and i didn't want to start on those and then have grease and then have them be out in the dust and stuff before i got the seal so waiting on the seals the Make sure that these are correctly adjusted, the preload on them. So I'm gonna do that. <clears throat> Once I get those, those are ordered. I got the PTFE, like uh, low drag ones. They're pretty expensive, like 25 bucks a piece for a seal. So that's a little expensive. And then front end's still all the same. So I did a bunch of work inside the car. Um, you can see there, I moved the whole brake assembly and clutch assembly back. And then on the brake pedal itself, you could, well, that's the clutch right there. So you see those screws, you can move it one way or the other. So the brake was the opposite of that way. And I moved it to the same way the clutch is. You can see it there. So that moved it over to the left a little bit <clears throat> and that helps spread your feet out. Uh, I like my feet spread apart. If I would, if it'd be possible, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. In a perfect world? I don't know. Something. Anyways, I, I'd like to run it like Bloomquest said he did, like brake on the opposite. Um, or brake outside, clutch inside. But you can see where the clutch is. It's above the frame rail, so your foot would have to sit on the frame rail. So that's definitely not going to happen. Um, and then I had to move my gas pedal. You can see, see that big ugly hole that's there? That's where it used to sit. The guy who put it in, he either had a size 40 shoe or he didn't attempt to even press it before he mounted it or kind of gauge it. So you can see it's dropped down like 
five, six inches now. <clears throat> and then this is for like a 45 degree angle and this is probably like a 30. So it's like quite a few degrees off. So I just took some nuts and then mounted it. It's sturdy enough for what it does. Uh, I mean, it still flexes all that just as if it's mounted flat. So it doesn't really matter. And then it's adjusted a little top to bottom to level this shaft out. And then you can see it there, maybe not, but it's a uh, pretty flush with that. And then if you push the gas pedal, it sits, there we go, pretty close to flush. So when you push the gas, it's gonna use this as a stop. So I'm not binding up the linkage on the carburetor, so I can use this as a stop instead of the carburetor, which that makes me feel a little bit better. It's just one of those things I thought of. <clears throat> you don't have to do it. You can, I don't know, you can build positive stop, probably better, like something off a of bracket, but I didn't really want to cut or weld on this cage at all, so that's why I would do that. Uh, there's an MSD box in here, I pulled that up, it had a little rubber mount. Um, I got my brake adjuster mounted, just had a hole right there. I got to deburr it still. So you can see <clears throat> all the nasty stuff still on it. Adjusted by belts, uh, they're ultra shield belts. They came with the car. They're like, I'm not a very big guy. So uh, they're like adjusted all the way on the backside to where it actually mounts. And then it almost comes to where it's sewn over. So it's always been like that. It's kind of hard to get belts. I don't know if they make like scrawny guy belts or what, but uh, need to do that. Uh, I just got some half inch bolts. Uh, this seat's been around, as you can tell, it's got a bunch of holes in it. Um, the big bolts are kind of ugly, but that's the size in the metal, so I just went with it. Should have washers, probably, but this is what it is. Down there, these bolts, that's uh, directly where my hip socket is on both sides, pretty much. So that's pretty cool. I feel both these bolts right in my hip. So that's lovely. This cushion, uh, the thick part actually stops right where the bolts are. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, mountain seats has always been kind of a pain. I don't really, I don't really get how you do it comfortable. I mean, the mounts up here, and you gotta have some amount of layback, or you're sitting straight up, and that feels weird. So it's got a little bit of layback. This seat's as far back as it'll go, and still have some layback. So. And then my legs were all crushed, so that's why I moved a bunch of this stuff. I'm pretty tall, so I had to change all this stuff, and I'm pretty much all legs. So when I get in, it's also a pain because my knees hit off this long before my butt comes out of here. Like, my butt's, like, right here, and my knees are already hitting off there, so I have to keep my legs out straight and then pull myself out on top of the roof, like, with the roof. So that's kind of a pain. Um, this is how I mounted my brake adjuster. So it's kind of like an S usually, so it comes out, comes up, and comes out again. And you see over there, that wasn't going to work, but I have it. So I just cut it and then just made a little T-handle. So it's not as smooth as like the S, because you can just grab it and go, wee, wee, wee. you know, do a circle pretty fast. This isn't as smooth, so that might be a pain. And then... It just has a little collar here. You weld the collar to the shaft itself. Big collar, you can put a mount on it, rivet it if you weld a tang off the side of it. I just tacked it in there because it's not like it's a high stress thing. Then it has another one of these little collars on the backside, so it allows it to spin, but it doesn't allow it to move in and out. I moved the steering wheel back. It was on this post and it was like way to the left. So I centered it up some and then moved it as far back as I could. This has a sweet collapsible shaft in it. So that allows you to move it back. Um, but yeah, I have long arms also to go with my long, long legs. So my arms were like back here and like getting like wedged up into here. So that's no good. So I moved it as far back as I could. Uh, the quick release collar is like literally riding right under here. So. There's not much I could do as far as raising it. I'd like it a little bit higher because my line of vision is direct, like the steering wheel directly covers up my lights. I mean, when it's 
light dark out, like in a feature, you should be able to see them, still see them glow, but I can't see them, so it kind of bugs me. And then I can't see the top of my oil pressure gauge. Like I can see like the O and 60, and that's it. Well, the O and 60 down, obviously, and we're probably not gonna be up there, not gonna lie. It's probably gonna be over in this range. Uh, temperature gauge I can see, fuel pressure gauge I can see to like eight down to zero. So that's not the greatest. The tack I can't see, but I mean, you're probably not gonna be looking at the tack. You just use the recall feature pretty much. Um, other than that, I don't think I've accomplished much. I mean, I've tightened up these bolts and stuff. Um, let's see what else. What else I've messed up on this thing? Uh, my battery box, I had this Optima Red Top in my Sport Mod. That's not gonna work with this mount, this total power mount. See there? It doesn't sit flush on the corner. And then same thing on this backside. This Optima has these weird little tang things. I don't know what they're for. Maybe bolt-in terminals or something but it doesn't work, so that bugs me. So I'm gonna get a total power battery. I'm pretty sure they're made in the US, so I'll probably just do that. And then I'll just keep this around the house. I pulled my Brin shifter out because I'm not gonna run a Brin because they don't make anything for a Mopar. So why run one of those? Like I, I called them and they, but like, we're kind of dumbfounded. Like, like, can I get a Dodge bell housing? And they're like, no, we do race transmissions. I'm like, yeah, uh, race a Dodge. And they're like, okay, but uh, we, we just do like race transmissions and stuff. But if you go on the website, they have like GM bell housings and Ford bell housings. So I'm like, yeah, like, do you make anything for the Dodge for your transmissions? They're like, no. So I don't want to run their stuff. They don't support Dodge, so I'm not going to support them. Not saying they're a bad company. It's just not the fit for me, so... That's that, I'm pretty sure. I just got some marine terminals also. This ground cable, someone tightened the hell out of it. So they broke that. And then this just has terminals on it. So there's that. Um, that if, one thing I don't like is if you can see there, they drilled into the door bars and put rivets in it. That little hole is not gonna do anything, but you're not supposed to like drill into structural stuff. So I don't know why you do that. I don't think that's very smart, but like I said, probably doesn't matter. Probably not gonna be whether you die or not in an accident, but I just always thought don't drill into structural stuff. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Hopefully get some more goodies in tomorrow and uh and keep the updates rolling on this thing ordered some springs also so i can get my front end together had seven and eight hundreds in which are way too heavy uh, my seals i'll be able to put my hubs back together so then the front end can go all back to it oh and i got uppers coming from shaw and their biscuit pull bar so i'll have one of their pull bars um i think that's it that should cover it and I'm still trying to decide between steering wheels which one I want. So, all right. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We're gonna get this. We're gonna get one of these Mopars right here. We're gonna get running. We're gonna go out and whip some Chevy ass. That's all there is to it. But don't hold me to it. <laughs>